Hey guys, this is James with Rogue Duelist Trade. Welcome to the channel. And on this channel, we talk about current and upcoming Yu-Gi-Oh product and whether or not you should invest your money in order to profit. We have a very exciting episode today. We're gonna to be opening up a case and a half. So that's 18 boxes of Eternity Code. So because I live in the US, we had a delayed release of Eternity Code because of everything that happened with Crush Card Virus, but we finally have it here. First editions, 18 boxes. Can't wait to open it with you guys. So guys, I wanna give you a lowdown on how we are going to do this video today. I'm gonna to record myself opening every single pack, but I'm only gonna show you guys the highlights of some of my best pulls. I feel that way you don't have to sit through an hour of me opening packs and you guys can at least see all the exciting pulls. And after you guys enjoy all of the highlights, we are going to do an overview of all of the high value cards we pulled out of our 18 boxes of Eternity Code. In addition to the overview, we're gonna go over some of my potential ratios per box and per case, even though our data sample is only 1.5 cases, but at least it'll be something fun for us to talk about. And then towards the end of the video, we are going to go over the estimated value that we pulled from our boxes of Eternity Code and then compare that value to my overall cost for the product and fees that I should expect when selling the product and then go over the potential profit that I should be expecting from Eternity Code. So guys, I'm gonna tell you right now that I will have likely worked very hard on editing all the footage for this video. So if you enjoy the content, like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below. That really helps the YouTube algorithm so people can help discover this channel and we can grow it together. And guys, if you enjoy content, content on Yu-Gi-Oh! Investments, subscribe to this channel and hit the notification button down below. That way, every time I upload a video, you will be the first ones to be notified. So guys, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and crack open the first box and enjoy the highlight reel from this product opening. All right, so pack number three of box number one. All right. Oh man, yes. All right, we got Link Ross as one of our first ultra rares. So Link Ross is sitting at about $21 right now. So that is a really good pull. Pays for about a third of the box. All right, so about halfway through the box, we are now on pack number 12. Only good card we've really seen so far is Link Ross. Right. Oh, all right, I'll take that. So this is Chamber Dragon Mage. She's about $20 too. So Link Ross is pretty crazy for an ultra rare is sitting at 20. Chamber Dragon Mage's also about 20 bucks. All right, pack 13 of box number one. So far, we just need about another 20 bucks in order to pay for this box. All right. Oh man, Woo! all right, we got access code talker. All right guys, that is the money card of the set if you're not considering starlight rares. So access code talker is sitting at about $71 right now. So yeah, we paid for this box and then some. All right, this is tax number 12 for the second box. Haven't really seen anything too great so far. Let's see. Ooh. All right, we got another Chamber Dragon Mate. So that is a, another 20 bucks that we're adding to the value of our overall case pulls. So that's not too bad. This is pack number 13 from the second box. Just pull Chamber Dragon Mate. Oh, it's a secret. Oh, what? Yes. All right, well, we immediately just paid off this box with Girsu the Orcus Mech Knight alone. Girsu the Orcus Mech Knight is sitting at about 55 bucks right now. So we just pulled about $75 of value in this box. Each box cost me about, I don't know, roughly $57 or so. Pack number 23, box number two, almost there. Let's see, honestly, really happy. Oh my God. Gosh, what? A second Link Ross. That's crazy. Two boxes in a row and a Link Ross every single time. I mean, we're sitting at almost like a hundred bucks of value for this box. This is nuts. It's pack number nine of box number three. So let's keep going. What? What? Is that even possible? How do I get three Link Rosses, three boxes in a row? All right, pack number 12, box three. Let's keep it going. So 
So this is the, ha the first half of box three. <laughs> what? What? What the heck? This is my third chamber dragon made? Is this my third? I got three chamber dragon maids, one in each of the boxes I've opened so far, and three link rosses. I, I thought that was statistically impossible. So let's keep going to pack number 13 of box number three. Let's see what we get. Oh, okay. All right, well, we got Gravedigger Trap Pole. That is about $14, so uh, we're about to probably just pay off the box because you only get about two secret rares per box. We got Link Ross. Pack number three, box four. Let's see what we got. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's crazy. That <laughs> This is our fourth our fourth chamber dragon made. Pack number 14 for box number four. Let's see what we got. Oh, looks like a secret rare. All right, Gizmek Uka. Yeah, this card has actually been seeing some play in the meta. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's not bad, it's a good card. I think it's about $14 right now. This is pack number 11, box five. <laughs> All right, and a Mandoran Archosaur. So this is actually a $32 card right now. So this is a this is a very good pull. It's definitely one of the better secret rares to pull out of the set. Pack number nine, box six. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, we got another Link Cross. So that is that is number four. Um, honestly, I didn't think that was uh, scientifically possible. Pack number 12, box six. Here we go. Oh yeah, all right. We got a Gearsu the Orcus Mech Knight. That is our second Gearsu the Orcus Mech Knight. So that's another $55 to add to this box. So this is pack number 13, box six. All right, we got another Grave Diggers Trap Hole. So uh, this is a $14 card. Pack number 14, box seven. Oh, Ooh, look, okay, that's that's a good pull. We got Ghost Mourner and Moonlit Chill. So she is a $35 card, um, has actually been seeing some play in the meta already. Pack number 14, box eight. Let's see what we got. All right, so we got our second secret. Yeah. This is Gizmek Uka. It's our second one. What is he again? He's about 14 bucks. Halfway through, we are in box number nine, pack one. Let's see what we got. <laughs> All right, we got another Gizmek Uka. So I believe this is our third Gizmek Uka. Again, that is about a $14 card. Box 10, pack number 12. Let's go ahead and see what we got. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. We got Access Code Talker. So we were really needing to see a high value card. The past two boxes were kind of duds about undervalued for the box but so far we're looking good we're looking at about close to eighty dollars um so profiting about 30 40 bucks so far on this box pack 13 box 10 looking good so far access code talker let's see what we got in here oh wow we got animador and archosaur so this is probably one of the best packs or one of the best boxes so far. Pack three, box 11. Let's see what we got. Okay, awesome, we got Grave Diggers Trap Hole. Not bad, it's a $14 card, not the highest value secret rare, but it's not bad. Box 12, pack eight. Box 12, pack eight. All right. We got Linkross, that's, that's crazy. This is, 
I think our fifth link, Ross? Box 12, pack 11. Pack 11, box 12, what do we got? Ooh. Oh, wow. That, that is crazy, I can't believe it. We got another Chamber Dragon made. It's a really good pull, definitely one of the best secrets. This is my fifth one. That's crazy, guys. I, I really think that's statistically impossible. I'm pretty sure each secret rare is about two per case is what you're supposed to expect. This is a case and a half. So for us to see five, we're like completely defeating the odds with this. That's, that's crazy. It's a good secret rare, I'll take it. Pack 13, box 12. Pack 13, box 12. <laughs> what? No way. Can't believe it, guys. We got a third Axis Code Talker. Um, I think this is statistically possible because again, two per case. We got a case and a half, so I guess the most that technically we're supposed to be able to get is three, but that's awesome. Pack 13, box 13. Let's see what we got. Okay. Oh. Yeah, all right. We got Gearsu the Orcus Mech Knight. I believe this is our third Gearsu the Orcus Mech Knight. So that gives us a play set. Again, statistically, we should be getting at least three. Pack number four, box 14. Let's see what we got here. And <laughs> what? Guys, what is the ratios for this, man? This is our our sixth link Ross. That's great because this is the highest value ultra rare in the set that boosts up our value a bit. Pack number 13, box 14. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> what? <laughs> Guys, what? We got access code talker again. This is our fourth access code talker. Again, the ratio for us should be about three uh, for a case and a half, but we beat the odds in the best way. Box 15, pack eight. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> what? Guys, I, <laughs> the ratios have to be different in the US. This is crazy. This is crazy. Box 15, pack 11. Let's see what we got. <laughs> okay, so this is our second Ghost Mourner in Moonlit Chill. So $35 card right now. So we're sitting at about the value of the box that I paid. And that's our first secret rare. Box 15, pack number 14. What do we got? Let's see. Oh. Whoa, I actually skipped right to it. We got another Gearsu the Orcus Mech Knight. That's, that's number four, so we're beating the odds again. I am, just, I am just blown away that we're beating the odds with like the best cards out of the product. Like, is that even possible? Pack number 12, box 17. Let's see what we get. Okay, we got another Chamber Dragon made. I'm pretty sure this is like our sixth one or something. Yeah, that was my sixth chamber dragon mate. Now, again, guys, this is like beyond what it should have been. It should have been three per, it should have been three per box and we got double that. So I don't know what's with these ratios. Again, I am very suspicious. I don't feel this uh, is the same as it is in the EU, which I believe is about two per case per secret rare. Box 17. Pack 13, let's see what we got here. <laughs> what? Guys, what? Man, this is crazy. The ratios have to be different. I'm pretty sure this is the fifth gear suit. Oh man, give me another access code talker. This is crazy. We got five gear suits in a case and a half. That should be statistically impossible, but again, it must be different than the EU. The North American prints must be different than you. The ratios have to be different. This is pack number 12, box 18. Last box, pack 12. See what we get. <laughs> I, I, what? This is our seventh chamber dragon made. That is just crazy. 
Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think this pretty much just proves that ratios are different in North America than they are in the EU and UK. This is pack 13 of box 18, the final box. Can't believe these ratios so far. Let's see what we got. <laughs> what? What? This is our fifth access code talker. A case and a half. We should have only been able to get three. Statistically, again, I'm throwing the statistically stuff out the window because it looks like it doesn't matter. This is access code talker number five. Let me go ahead and just show you guys really quick. One, two, three, four, five. I mean, this is just $70 each card here. That's 140, 280, uh, 350 bucks for these five cards. I mean, that's nuts. I mean, I think this does mean that we're probably not gonna be getting any Starlight Rares, which is disappointing, but I mean, hey, I, I'm, I'm happy to take the access code talker. All right, guys, I opened all of the packs for all 18 boxes. I hope you enjoyed the highlights. I went ahead and plugged in all of the secret and ultra rares that we pulled into my data model that you can see right here. And I'm just gonna go through, first off, what I pulled and also go through the value of what I pulled and then my estimated return that I should be expecting or profit. So let's go ahead and jump in. We're gonna go from the highest dollar secret rare first to the lowest. So we pulled five Axis Code Talkers, five Gear Suit the Orcus Mech Knights, two Ghost Mourners and Moonlit Chill, two Anima Domed Archosaurs, seven Chambered Dragon Maids, which is crazy, four Gizmec Ukas, five Grave Digger Trap Holes, two Deep Sea Arias, two Plunder Patrol Liz, and two Titano Ciders. So let's first talk about how crazy it is that we pulled so many Axis Code Talkers, Gear Sus, and, and Chamber Dragon Mates. I mean, Axis Code Talker and Gear Su is the highest dollar secret rare right now in the set. So it's crazy that we pulled five of each. Um, I, I really wonder if I just got extremely lucky with uh, the ratios on my case and a half. And the seven chamber dragon maids is crazy as well. I mean, 20. So from what we understood in the EU, they were no longer gonna be doing short prints. There was about two secret rares per case for every secret rare. So this is all over the board. Um, and again, this is a very small sample size, but it's just so out of the range of being fairly distributed across each box or each case. So um, I'm happy about it. That's fine with me. Let's go ahead and go through our ultra rares. So ultra rares, we pulled Seven Link Rosses, the highest valued ultra rare out of the product, we pulled seven of it. Three Medulce Salons. We pulled nine Croco Dragons, which is a $5 ultra rare. I'm very happy about that. Five Dragon Maid Shows, three Emblem of the Plunder Patrols, eight Lopter Shadow Generator Bosses, which is great. He's, he's uh, $3.40 per card. Four Fusion Deployments, four Machina Metal Crunchers, three Arch Nemesis S. Chateau, four Trap Tricks Alamaris, 10 Arch Nemesis Protos, four Union Drivers, four Heavy Forwards, four Deep Sea Prima Donnas. It's all over the board. This is definitely not an even distribution in most cases. I mean, there's a fair amount of fours. So yeah, that's all of our secret and ultra rares. I'm not gonna go over the super rares and commons because honestly, it would just take me way too much time to put all of that in this video to sort all of that out. I think this is a good place to start to really see the value in what we pulled because it's always gonna be top heavy in the ultra and secret rares anyways. So if we go and look at our ratios, a per case ratio, so I had to do some math to get this to a per case even though we opened 18 boxes. We have 3.3 access code talkers, 3.3 gear sues. I'm just gonna go and talk through the ones that are higher than what would be normal. 4.6 Chamber Dragon Maids, 3.3 Gravedigger Trap Holes, and then jumping over to Link Ross, we got 4.6 as our per case ratio. We got six Croco Dragons as our per case ratio, five Lopter Shadow of the Generator Bosses, and we got six Arch Nemesis Protos. I definitely, 6.6, .6, we definitely have seen a lot of him. I, I don't know what these ratios are about. You guys can skim through, maybe pause the video if you wanna look at the ratios for some of the other cards I may not have mentioned. So we got a lot of bang for our buck in the product, even though we didn't get to pull a Starlight 
rare. Obviously, if we pull the Starlight rare, we would be profiting very well from this product. So let's go ahead and go over our estimated total value from all of the ultras and secrets that we've pulled, compare that to the cost that I paid for the product and the anticipated fees and expenses such as shipping, uh, seller fees on TCG player, et cetera, Take all that into account and see what our estimated profit should be. If you look at this first column, this is based on the lowest value per card uh, using TCG player. And then this is considering the average cost per card in the marketplace. And looking at this with just the ultras and secret rares in, we should be profiting about $164 if we were to sell every single secret and ultra rare from what we pulled based on current value. And if it was the average cost, which there may be some fluctuation where some of these cards go up, which would also mean some of the other cards would go down, but that would be at about a $415 mark. So because this product already came out in the EU and we had a lot of folks get it in North America from the EU, the value was a lot higher. Now that we're getting prints in North America, we're flooding the market with more cards, which means there is more supply. So demand may start to dwindle because a lot of people have already made maybe picked up the cards, but that means the value of the cards are gonna start going down until time goes on and people start buying out whatever's remaining in the marketplace right now. But yeah, I mean, would I say $164 is worth the effort of uh, buying a case and a half, opening it all, and then in time selling it all? I. <laughs> Honestly, no, I don't think $164 is worth all of the effort to put into that. Now, if we got a Starlight Rare and that bumped up to, you know, potentially five to eight to thousand dollars, depending on the Starlight Rare that you pull, then yeah, that makes it a lot more worth your while. So, so is investing in cases really worth it? I would say it can. Obviously it can because people do it. I think it's gonna be more worth your time and money if you're able to invest in five to 10 to 15, 20 cases. That's when you're really gonna start seeing money. And that's when you're gonna start seeing Starlight Rares coming because this is without Starlight Rares. So you're gonna make profit without. So if you can pull a couple Starlight Rares, let's say if you bought five cases, then you're really gonna start seeing some return. We don't really know what's gonna happen with a lot of the current cards that in the product, I'm probably going to wait about a day or so before I start putting things on TCG player because I want to really think about what cards I feel will go up in time, what cards I'll likely hold on to because of that, and what cards I want to put up now because I feel the value is going to go down, such as Linkross. I probably want to get that posted immediately because it seems the ratios for Linkross is very different in North America. Again, this is a small sample size, but if that is the case, there's going to be a lot flooding the market, so I probably want to get rid of those quickly. Same with Chamber Dragon Maid. Access Code Talker, I don't know. It's seeing a lot of meta play. I probably may hold on to those. Gearsu, I think I'm gonna try to flip fairly quickly. Orcus hasn't really seen a lot of meta play right now. They might, now that this has been officially released in North America, but I, I think $55 is a pretty strong value for that card. I feel like honestly, it could probably see the 30 soon. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that posted. But yeah, I'll let you guys know maybe in a future video, maybe we'll talk about Eternity Code again, do an analysis similar to what we did with Legendary Duelist Magical Hero in our previous video to this one. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of it. I'd love to get your thoughts. Leave them down in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought of this video. It's a different format. Happy to change it up as we kind of keep doing these openings. I really just want to make this type of video engaging and informative for you. That's kind of the purpose of this channel. So you can think about whether or not you should invest money in Eternity Code yourselves if you're able to pick up a case or a few boxes. Honestly, I would say it's a good product to buy boxes of if you want it personally because there's a lot of value in the product where you're likely going to break even or profit, but there are the chances that you won't profit. Evaluate that risk and make that decision on your own. I would say if there's a lot of singles you want in this product, I would say, yeah, go ahead and pick up a few boxes. I think that would be a safe pickup. So guys, for some upcoming videos, if you haven't seen it, we are getting some Toon Chaos leaks. And actually, if you're seeing this video, we've already had them. So in my next video, I'm gonna go over an updated risk analysis on Toon Chaos, which has been my biggest video yet. It's hit over 6,000 views. 
Obviously, there's a lot of people interested in the product, so there might be a lot more to it than I initially gave it in that video. I think these leaks are gonna give us enough information to make a better educated guess on the risk of investing in that product. So guys, thank you. Like this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. Thank you.